try something. Uh, we are on our sixth day of a new year. Uh, praise God. And, and I believe that we all want to see uh, greater blessings in 2019. Amen? Amen? And let me tell you something. I believe that God wants to bless us even in greater ways. But I'll tell you what God's desire is. God's desire is this, that you and I trust them through the journey. We are on a journey. Can you say amen? Just like the Israelites, we're going to read in a moment. Just like the Israelites, uh, we know that they were in Egyptian bondage for hundreds of years. And it was prophesied that one day they were going to be set free. And let me tell you something. God rose, rose up Moses. Moses came and, and uh, he spent 40 years uh, in, in, in Pharaoh's house uh, learning how to be a leader. Then God took him to the desert and put him another 40 years to teach him how to be a shepherd. Can you say amen? And finally the day came when he went back. Uh, by, uh, we're going to read right now where God sent them back and said go and set my people free and I want to tell you something we are the people that have been set free and let me tell you something we've been set free to do great exploits so you know what we need to hear this year God what do you have for me what do you want for me because let me tell you something we are building the kingdom time is running short and it's time for us to stop thinking about self and start thinking about God what is your will for my life? Amen. Amen? This church is not a clubhouse. This church is not a place where we gather just to feel good. This is a house of worship. We are here because we've been set free. We are here because we've been delivered. Can you say amen? amen. This morning, I want to minister a message entitled, A Journey into Our Spiritual Destiny. And I'm going to read, start with verse 7, Exodus chapter 3. And the Lord said, man, when God says something, you better listen, okay? And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard the cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. God knows all things. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a God, to a good, large uh, land. Uh, and, and, and let me say something. He says, I have come down to deliver them. Let me try something. And he did. But God uses people to do the work. Can you say amen? So listen, what does God have for you? He says, he says, uh, and bring them, them up, bring them up from the land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the, of the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Parasites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. That's a lot of people there. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have, all, and I, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Let me tell you something. The reason why we are blessed, we are saved, we are delivered, is because God saw all that, and it bothered Him because He did not create us to be oppressed, to be addicted to be depressed. Amen? So he did something about it. In verse 10, he's talking to Moses. He says, come now, as he would talk to me as I preach to you. Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Amen? God has delivered us out of Egypt. He deserves praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. We glorify you. We praise you. We praise you. 
We praise you, my God, in Jesus' name. We praise you in the name of Jesus for our deliverance. We praise you for our salvation. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Father, I pray that you would anoint me, that I would decrease and you increase. Father, I give you all the honor and all the glory. And in Jesus' name, devil and you and all your demons, I bind and rebuke you. You have no place in this service. I, 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 Lord, I, 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 I already prayed this morning when I came in the blessings and the anointing upon your people to receive. We thank you, my God, for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We're on a journey. We're on a journey. And I wonder what 2019 will look like for us. What trials will we face this year? What victories will be waiting for us? Amen? What challenges will take place throughout the world, in our government, in our city? Well, how will our lives, how will our ministries, how will our families be impacted in the coming months? These are things we got to think about. Uh, 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 and thank God that he's with us every step of the way. See, that's our hope. Whether you're in the valley, whether you're on the mountaintop, whether you, you, you are in, in glory or you're going through something, we need to understand that God is always with us. You, te- you need to listen to this message here in church, sitting down knowing that God is with you. And that's gonna, God's going to speak to you. God's going to encourage you. If you're down, he'll lift you up. If you're up, give him praise. Give them praise in the low time. Give them praise in the high time. But God will be with us all, every step of the way. He took us out of sin and is leading me and is, and is leading us to a blessed life. I love that. I thank God that I'm not who I used to be. I thank God that I'm not that wino that I used to be. I thank God that I didn't wake up to smoke weed and pop pills. I thank God that I'm a preacher. I thank God that I'm saved. I thank God that I'm delivered. I thank God that I'm preaching this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's all right if you get excited. It's not going to bother me this morning because we got a lot to get excited about. Can you say amen? It's all right if you slap yourself today and say, wake up, man. Why are you so depressed? Why are you so messed up? Just slap yourself. And worship God. Hallelujah. We're in the house of God. I believe with all my heart that we ain't seen nothing yet. We're entering this year with anticipation. We're going on a 21-day fast starting tomorrow. And we're excited. You know what? But we ain't seen nothing yet. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, But as it is written, if it is written... I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. That's us. Amen? We may feel like the Israelites coming out of Egypt sometimes, standing on the border of the promised land, just looking. You're listening to this message and you're on the border of the promised land wondering if it's going to happen. Oh, man, I'm afraid. You have to understand that between the, 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 the wilderness and the promised land, there's an obstacle. There, there's a big Red Sea. I mean, Red Sea. Uh, 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 is that the Red Sea? I know the, the Jordan and the Red Sea. The Red Sea. You say, you know, how are we going to get across? Don't worry about it. If God says he's going to get you over there, he'll take care of them. You know, it's a man, there ain't no boat. You, just got, you don't need no boat. When God says he's going to get over there, you're going to get over there. But because they were going to trust God, they knew that, that there had to be some tremendous blessings waiting for them on the other side of the Jordan. No matter what happens, they knew that God would be with them. See, that's the same attitude we need to have. 
We do not know what's up ahead for us as we travel through 2019. We do not know what joys or sorrows wait for us. We do not know what victories or problems are up ahead. But we do know one thing, that we have the same promise God gave to Joshua at the border of the promised land. And what was that? Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's a promise. But he tells us, he tells us to be of good courage. To, to, don't be dismayed. Don't be afraid. Trust me. Trust me. I'm guiding you. I'm leading you. When God led Israel out of, uh, uh, when God led Israel into the promised land, he had already positioned them for victory. He, he delivered them out of Egyptian bondage through miracles and signs and wonders. Now, what miracle has God done in your life that you could grab on and say, man, it's God that I'm here? Huh? You, you, you know what miracle? Man, if, you, if you're delivered, set free, you're clean, you're sober, you're, you're here. How many of you ever say, I can't believe I'm, ch I'm in church? That's a miracle. <laughs> See, God proved his omnipotent power to, to the Israelites, just like he did to, to us. The, the Israelites saw God perform miracles greater than the world has ever known. He opened the Red Sea, and they marched across on dry land. Amen? They didn't have any mud on their shoes. It was dry. He led them through. He led them by a pillar of cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. He fed them manna when there was no food. He brought down food from heaven. He caused water to gush out of a rock when they were thirsty. Can you say amen? I'll tell you something. You could be in places where, 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 where it's impossible uh, for man to make things happen, but for God, nothing is impossible. This is why he says, you got to trust me. You got to trust me. Today, somebody needs to hear that. You got to trust him. You got to trust him. He knows what you're going through. You can't do nothing about it. You don't know how it's going to happen, but don't worry about it. God says, trust me, because I can do all things if you believe. That's the gospel. I'm not making it up. That's in the Bible. But you got to read it. It's more than ink on paper. It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. He spoke it. He declared it. And all you need to do is trust Him. He gave them great victory over their enemy, the Amalekites. Amalekites. They heard God speak in an audible voice as they gathered together in unity on Mount Sinai. I believe God is speaking to you right now through me. He's telling you, the only challenge he's giving you today is, trust me. Hear this message. Hear the word. But you need to trust him. God pledged himself to be their God. He pledged to protect them. He pledged, he pledged to prosper them. And God's promises stand still, still stand for us today. In Hebrews 13, 5, he says, For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. There's one very important thing that we have to understand about our spiritual journey as we travel through it. Very important, very important is that our destiny is in our hands. Okay? God has brought his people to a new place in spiritual destiny. We're here this morning. I'll tell you what, I'm so ready. I'm, I'm so ready. I don't know what God's going to do. 
There's going to be trials, we know that. But there's going to be victories. Many times it takes a trial for us to wake up and see what God is going to do. Can you say amen? God has positioned us for victory. He has delivered us from bondage. He has set us free. He has given us power over sin. You see, we are positioned for greater things. If you're going through a trial, that's a trial. But he's positioned you for victory. See, when I go through a trial, a heavy trial, I don't go back to my old ways. I don't go back and get loaded. I don't go back and numb myself because none of that is going to help me going forward. What I got to do? Trust them. Trust them. God has given us covenant promises that provide for all our needs. He pledged himself to be our God. He has equipped us with the powerful weapon, of, for, for, with powerful weapons of spiritual warfare. He has sent his Holy Spirit to live within us. That, that's a big thing. 1 John 4, 4 says, You are of God, little children, talking to us. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Praise God. So you know where that leaves us? It's our choice. What happens to us? If we, fir if we finish this journey... It's our choice. If we give up, is our choice. If we thank them when all hell is breaking loose, it's our church choice. If, if we curse them and die, it's our church choice. But see, he delivered us. He's positioned us. He's already told us where to go. It's up to us to go and get there. But he is with us all the way. I'm not going to preach very long today because got, we got uh, something else that, I gotta, well, that we're going to be doing after service, but uh, it's our choice, okay? Behind us is the world and all that appeals to the faith. How many know that it's still there? How many know that sometimes we even think about it? How many know that sometimes we even smell it? How many know that sometimes we even turn around and take a peek? Sad to say that some people go back. But behind us is the world and all that appeals to the flesh. But before us is a new spiritual territory where we can live in victory because God is with us. A place with God, a place with God where we can take hold of our spiritual inheritance and the promises of God. See, we have to take hold of what God has given us or else we'll let go. The Bible says, hold on to the plow and don't let go. A place where we are equipped and prepared to win the war as we exercise our spiritual authority over the flesh. You know, we need to learn to pray and pray with authority. We need to, we, we need to command, we need to command evil spirits to leave with authority because we've got it. We got to be tough. We got to stop being wimps. We got to stop being sissies. We got to stop being cowards. We got to stop being so, so, so uh, idiots, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> you know, when it, you know when you're being assaulted. You know when you're being attacked. Now, if you know what that is, don't throw no pity party. Amen. That's a time to get violent. The kingdom of God suffers violence, the Bible says, but the violent take it by force. 
You might have tears in your eyes. Say, ah, I'm not crying because I'm lonely. I'm I, I, I bind you in the name of Jesus with authority. Today, God has set this new spiritual territory before us, and he is saying to us, go possess what's yours. Go and grab it. Our spiritual destiny is in our hands. We have a choice, okay? We can obey God and by faith go into this new spiritual ter territory and take it, take what's ours, or we can rebel and disobey God. We can live in unbelief and forfeit our inheritance in, and live in defeat. You know, sometimes I might preach things, and I say this from experience, because I remember hearing my pastor when I was, when I was uh, uh, a young convert in church, and, and, and my pastor would be preaching things. And I said, what is he, why is he saying that? We're all saved here. Well, why is he saying that? Nobody does that. But then... Then I became a pastor. <laughs> you know what I mean? And people is people. That's what Kermit the Frog was told by this. Remember when, when taking Manhattan, when they were, everybody was all messed up, and the bartender, I'm not bartender, the guy served me the food, he said, come here, come here, I'm going to tell you something. And Kermit just said, Kermit was just, man, I can't believe how everybody's acting all that. And, and he said, come here, I want to tell you something. And he says, understand one thing. People is peoples. You know, and Karen went, huh? <laughs> 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 Let me tell you something, church. The preaching of the word, the truth, has to bring us in one mind and one accord with God. One, my, one mind and one accord with the body. We have to be like the people when they were in unity on Mount Sinai, all together, listening to God as he spoke to them. And it's the truth that sets you free. This morning, you could have come in here all messed up and all that, but let me tell you something. Listen to God. He wants you to trust you. He wants you to trust him because he's taking you somewhere. Where you're taking yourself or where you're thinking about going is not going to help you. It's going to hurt you. See, we are the people of God. We are not in slavery to the ways of the world anymore. You know what? Pharaoh does not have us bound. We are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. We live under a new government. Can you say amen? A new king. Jesus is our king and not Pharaoh. Hosea 2.23 says, Then I will say to those who were not my people, You are my people. And they shall say, You are my God. Can you say amen? De Deuteronomy 28.13 says this, And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you today and are careful to observe them you're the group that God is going to use greatly during this end time harvest and who is that group it's those who are walking in total obedience to God and this is what we want to do. We want to walk in total obedience. We want, we want to, to be used greatly in, in, in the end time. I was talking to Sister Glenda Jackson before the service, and I told her, I have a desire. I have a desire for this church that we experience Pentecost, that we experience the power of God, that we experience like what was taking place in Azusa, uh, the revival where, 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 where people literally seen flames, a fire, because the Holy Spirit was there. You know what? That can happen, but we ain't hungry enough. Amen. We got to be hungry. We got to die to self. 
on, on, on Wednesday that I'm doing a series on, on brokenness. On brokenness. We need to be broken. We need to be broken, and, and we need to desire uh, uh, what God has. God will not pour out his power and glory upon those who are walking in rebellion or uh, uh, rebellion to him or uh, to his word. Galatians 6, 7 says this, Be not deceived. Uh, uh, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to the flesh will... Uh, will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good and do season. We will reap if we do not faint. Amen. Don't grow weary. Don't get tired of, 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 of the things that you go through. You know, oh, here we go again. Here we go again. Here we go again. Yes, here you go again. But let me tell you something. Don't get weary because in due season, God is going to bless you again. God is going to bless you. We're on a journey. Satan's main goal, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be closing with this. Satan's main goal is to lead you into rebellion against God and his word. Don't raise your hand, but how many here have been in states of rebellion since you served God? How many of you have been in rebellion to God's word, to, to, to God himself uh, in 2018? How many have heard the message in church, I ain't going to do that. Who's he think he, who, who do you think he is? Well, I know who I am. What you need to, to understand is the word of God. If a donkey speaks it, you better listen. <laughs> I'll close with this. For real, I'll close with this. <laughs> your spiritual destiny is in your hands. Listen, as I was typing this in, the Lord dealt with me with this. Very simple. Life is short. Make every day count. I don't care if you're young. You can die tonight. Live your life wisely. Your eternity is nothing to play around with. And, and this is Another thought, I told my wife, I better write this down. We were sitting down talking. I said, I better write this down because the Lord just spoke this to me. Don't be like those who were delivered from Egyptian bondage but died in the wilderness. See, we've been delivered. We've been delivered. We're on our way, but we ain't there yet. Don't be like those that cop attitude. Don't be like those that, ah, well, you know, Jesus, they've been saying that for 2,000 years, and, and yeah, I love God. You know, no, you better slap yourself. Forget that, you know, just that, you know, you better slap yourself. Don't be like those who were delivered from Egyptian bondage like us, and, but, and, but they died in the wilderness. Why? Because they doubted God. They murmured and complained about everything. Clothing scripture, Psalms 90 verse 12. God gave me this in a devotion as I was reading in the morning. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Let me tell you something. We're going to need wisdom to walk through this journey and to, and to uh, praise God in the hard times and praise Him in the good times. Did we see that this morning? Give Him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you in the name of Jesus. Father, we praise you. We glorify you.